The snowfall is thankfully light. As I walk back through the city, hand, bags and hands from the day's last minute shopping downtown. People calmly walk to and fro, the occasional passerby of Eileen's country home replaced by the crowds of downtown Utah. Briefly distracted by the huge Christmas tree, completed just in time for Christmas Eve, I think back to yesterday's events. When all said and done, leaving Eileen's family ended up being a calm affair. I gave her parents my thanks for taking care of me at such short notice. Both said they'd be more than happy to have me again. Eve had also reluctantly come to terms with my leaving by then. And then there was the matter of Eileen. Our sullen farewell was short and sweet, but maybe that was because there wasn't much left to say. Thanks to my time in Colorado, a surprising amount of things I needed to buy before heading back to my family slipped my mind. At least one near around the city tonight gave me a chance to unwind and set my thoughts straight. Of course, my phone starts ringing as soon as I appreciate some time alone to think. Pulling it from my pocket with my free hand, I'm surprised to see it's dad. Uh, hi. Hi, Allison. Not catching you at a bad time? No, no, it's fine. Sounds like you're busy. I can barely hear you. Um. Just wandering around downtown to fill some time and do some errands. Still good to be picked up tomorrow morning? Yeah, I'll be ready at the apartment with all my stuff. Sorry again about changing everyone's plans. Told you before, it's fine. Plans already had to change because of your finals. Pick you up tomorrow, then. It'll be good to see everyone again. Is Mom doing okay? She's better, thankfully. You gave a bit of a shock when you said you weren't coming back for so long. We were all shocked. Seemed like you were having a rough time away from home, so I never expected you to go out of state like that. So they could tell. I feel a little sheepish thinking back. So you had a good trip then? I feel a chill as the last few days rush through my head. Hmm. Yeah, I did. Hmm. Once again, Dad can tell just from my voice. It's impossible for me to hide how I'm feeling. Something in me compels me to try anyway. What? I had fun. Well, when you're home, you'll tell us all about it, right? Of course. I'm looking forward to it. I am too. You know that you can tell me anything. Take care. I know. Bye, Dad. See you soon. Love you. With that, the call ends. I stare blankly at the screen of my phone. I'll be happy to see my family again, not to mention the warmth and liveliness of home. To take a deep breath, lump in my throat forming from homesickness. I guess that feeling never goes away completely. With the phone already out, I take a moment to glance through the photos I've taken on it. A few from Colorado are most recent, which will be nice to show my parents. As I keep going back through, I stop at a photo taken just before I left for there. The screen shines brightly in the darkness of the night. Photo of everyone gathered in my apartment celebrating the end of semester, making me mull over everything that's happened since I arrived here. It's only been a few months, but my time since starting college has been an adventure already. I've learned so much, found so many friends, and discovered so many kinds of relationships. Such a different way of life I lead now. Smiling faces all gathered for that one moment in time. It's all thanks to those around me, like them. The phone goes dark once more as I lock it. The precious memory slipped into my pocket once more. The only light to be seen now is that cast by the Christmas tree, occasionally broken by the passing crowds. A strange sense of calm falls over me as I stand in the falling snow, hands slipping into my pockets for warmth. I was alone and afraid. Eileen was the answer to that, I thought. She seemed so cool and collected, managing life by herself. That strength of will was what drew me to her, in hindsight. It was thanks to Eileen, Caprice, and our little club that I was able to cope with being alone. The reason I'm so at peace with myself isn't that I've finally learned to live without others. It's because I know I have others to help. Maybe I was too clingy, as Eileen said. I just wanted to know her more, even if she was brusque at the best of times. She wants to retain her solitude so dearly, though. 
Perhaps it's for the best that things go like this. Swallowing the lump in my throat as I push the thoughts aside, I begin to walk once more. It's then that my phone begins to buzz in my pocket. Did dad forget to say something? Eileen, why is she calling me now of all times? Should I answer? My phone is shaking in my hand. I pick up the call, but I have no idea what to say. Hello? Allison? Allison, where are you right now? She doesn't allow me to so much as get a word out, her voice breathless. I'm back home in Utah. No, I mean, I know. So am I. Can we meet somewhere? Where are you exactly? I'm by the Christmas tree in the city square. Okay, stay where you are. If the line goes dead, I'm left dumbfounded. Eileen is coming here? Within moments, I hear a car door slam loudly. Surely she wasn't looking around f for me. Familiar figure jogs up as quickly as she can, she can in her high boots, her long strides clinking loudly on concrete. She slowly pulls up to a stop, our eyes finally meet. And so we stand in the city square next to that large tree. Between us, only the falling snow. Eileen, why, why are you? What, you didn't want to see me? Not really. I almost respond, but true surprise stops me from finding the right words. I end up just hanging my head, not knowing how to respond to her snark in such a situation. My bags weighing down my arms, I set them down. As I look back up, I see Eileen's quip for what it was. Diversion to hide her feelings. She soon realizes I've caught on, her voice turning soft. I found your voice message. I didn't want to leave things as they were. I did. My face flowers into a blush as I grimace from embarrassment. I knew she'd eventually hear it, but it's still embarrassing to think about. Um, I... As I think back to everything that happened, I feel a pang of regret. Once again, I feel myself shrinking away from her. But haven't I been a pain? Ever since we met, I've only caused you trouble. Yeah, you sure have. Thanks. There's that sardonic humor again. I can't remember if I ever found it endearing. Nope, never did. Why do you do that? Your first response to everything is to try and brush things off with a quip against someone. Only because everyone sticks their nose into my business. Girl, shut up. Go away! If this isn't an apology, I don't want it. Including me, I guess. Follow that up with a dry laugh, yet Eileen's expression doesn't change. Should have expected that, but I feel my chest tighten in response nevertheless. I just I already had things figured out for myself. You've said that before. As silence reigns, it feels as though we're just repeating the steps we took until now. Nothing's changed. I'm still me and Eileen is still Eileen. For all I might want to get closer to her, she still keeps pushing me away. She came all the way back here to work things out, yet we're still st uh, stuck awkwardly trading barbs. Everything we did together, was it only ever a pain to you? I didn't want to say it, but... I seal my heart to try and force out the words tightly holding my arm to try and study myself. I suppose this is all over, then. No. I want to break up. Her shout startles me, the point where she recoils a little from my reaction. I guess we're both getting flustered. I mean, that's not what I meant. I, if there's a breakup button, I'm hitting it. Reminding us that we're not alone, a small child goes running by us as her mother runs after her. The distraction gives Eileen time to reason through all this while I try my best to ignore the stinging of my heart. Everything is so confusing right now. Every day was the same. Living alone in my apartment and working away in that art room. I thought I was fine being alone until you came into my life and messed everything up. Again, not helpful. When I thought you might really be gone, I realized how lonely I was. That's so crazy. I was just talking about that. Whoops. I meant what I said earlier. I can forget all my worries around you. I don't have to work hard and worry about being my best. I don't have to prove anything. 
thought you'd understand. Understand what? You don't tell me shit. I didn't ever expect you to take my parents' side. I didn't think you'd try to tell me I'm making the wrong choices. I never said that. My heart sinks. Is that how it looked to her? Like I betrayed her? How could I? I've always seen what her parents can't. She's serious about painting. If there's one thing I know about her, it's that. Why would I want to ruin that world of hers that I found so fascinating? But when I thought I might lose you, I realized you were right. For all I talked big about how you should try new things in college, I was the one pushing everyone away and trying to stay the same. As I try to think of how to explain myself, I realize Eileen's eyes have become moist. It's such a strange sight that I completely lose track of what I was going to say. Moments pass as I think over her words, trying to sift through my emotions. She looks so different now. Her proud stature somehow smaller, more fragile. She's scared. Seeing her in this state puts me on the brink of tears as well. I know my answer already, given how, given how seeing her like this affects me. I only ever wanted to be the person closest to you. Why would I want to ruin that world of yours? When it's what brought us together. Let's... Let's try again, Eileen. Is there a seat? Hold up. I'm sorry. Uh, hug. <sighs> Without warning, she pulls me into an embrace, arms wrapping tightly around me. My brain short circuits as she begins to weep, completely unable to handle the situation. I have no idea what to say as she clutches me tightly to her shuddering body. My own composure barely holding as my arms slowly raise and come around her back. Oh, I see now. Eileen's finally cracked under the pressure of that wall she carefully built up over so many years, finally coming down all at once. I hold her tightly to me as she cries, trying my best to comfort her. She's here and in my arms. This vulnerable, honest girl is for only me to see, my own eyes only barely staying dry. This Eileen is one I've never seen, but she's the Eileen I've fallen for all over again. Thank you, Allison. I feel a lump in my throat as I stroke her hair, trying my best to soothe her. I love you, Allison. I love you. Holding her close as her words are muffled into my shoulder, I close my eyes and savor the feeling of her against me. Eileen loves me. This feeling, this warmth throughout my entire body as I hear those words. I guess I really am in love with this hopeless girl. And I love you. Let's do this together. LOL. Guys, I'm crying. Can you tell? Ooh. Ooh. Tears. We are such different people with wildly different backgrounds and worlds of our own. As long as the two of us can let each other in, though. We can build a life together. Side by side, we can start here. It's okay, Eileen. <laughs> Welcome home. Oh, I did it! I got through the game! This episode's only 50 minutes long. <laughs> oh, that was good. I'm glad Eileen finally apologized. Because had she not apologized, not she just come back, I would have said like, no, break up with her ass. Because I do not tolerate that shit. But yeah, that was good. Uh, it's Wallace. I love Wallace. He's so funny. Is that Caprice? No, that's Eileen. I love their outfits. They're just so funny. <sighs> that was good. This was a really good game. And it's a prequel, apparently. So maybe I'll play this, the original game. It's not a sequel since it's the OG, but that's so cool. Huh. That was very, very enjoyable. I love the characters. Oh, is she finally going home to see her parents, her family? Did they do like the these ones? It's very pretty. <sighs> That's a lot of guest artists. 
But yeah, that was good. I really, really enjoyed that game. It was very good. It was well, well layered. Um, Cause like you cannot understand everyone's perspectives, but you can still get frustrated with the characters, obviously. Cause obviously I got pissed off at Eileen. <laughs> Cause she was getting on my nerves at the end there. But then, you know, once you are on the verge of losing someone, you realize, hey, Ugh, yeah, that, that ending was good. Made me tear up. I also was, like, tearing up when they were fighting just because it's very real. But that was good. Very, very good. Bell House Studio. Finn. Whee! That's good. This was a good game. <sighs> okay. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this game, this episode, all of this, any of it, please leave a comment down below, like the video, subscribe, check out other videos, because this is a long series. This game took me five hours. A lot of people are like, oh, this game took me an hour. This took me five over the course of a year, so... Thank you so much for watching. If you like this game, if you like this video, do all of the everything I said before. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye.